Do you want to learn how to scrape data from the internet with Power Automate Desktop? Then you've come to the right place. In this tutorial, you will learn how to scrape data from web pages with multiple pages. If you're new to the channel, my name is Thomas and you're watching TomSec Academy. Let's start right away. The website that we're going to use today is the website that you see on the screen. And there is a link to this website in the description of this video. We're going to scrape multiple categories. So you see that we have phones here. I see the category page of this specific category has multiple pages, which we're all going to scrape. If you navigate to computers, and for example, tablets, you also see that this page also has multiple pages. And in this video, you will learn how to navigate to all product data and navigate as well through the multiple pages. Let's navigate back to the home page and let's get started. So let's start with the creation of a new Excel file. I'm going to create an Excel file here. And let's call this one to scrape. And here I'm going to define the categories that I would like to scrape. So I'm going to open it. I'm going to rename the sheet to sheet one. And let's go to this website. Okay, let's see what we have. So we have phones. But I'm only going to focus on the phones with touchscreen here because this category has multiple pages. It has, it has two. So let's copy this one. Let's go to the Excel file. And here I'm going to create two columns. I'm going to create one with the name and I'm also going to create one with the URL. So those are the headers. Let's make them bold. And then the first name, I'm just going to call this one phones. And this is the URL. And then let's do two more categories. So let's also navigate to computers. And then we're going to go for tablets. So I'm going to copy this one. Let's call it tablets. And let's also paste this one here. And then let's also do laptops, right? So let's copy this one. Oh, sorry, laptops and paste the URL. Okay, so we're going to scrape those three pages. And for these three pages, we're going to then scrape every page. So we're going to go to this entire um, navigation. I see this website has quite a lot of laptops. So I think that's really exciting because here we can also try whether or not has the has the right performance. Um, let's go back to the Excel file. We have all of this. We have name and we have URL. That's important. And then let's open Power Automate Desktop. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Excel. I'm not going to launch a blank document. I'm going to open the following document. And that's the document that you've just seen on the desktop here. Um, the Excel file doesn't need to be visible. As we've discussed earlier, this is uh, decreasing the performance of the bot. And let's save this one. And if you open Excel, we're going to close it as well. So go for close Excel, and we are going to close Excel instance. This is important because in this um, exercise, we're also going to work with multiple Excel sheets, so multiple Excel instances. This one I don't need to save because I'm not making any changes in this Excel file with the bot. Okay, and then I'm going to read the Excel range, read from Excel worksheet, and put this one below the line Excel. I want to extract all available values from this worksheet. And of course, my Excel file has headers. You've already seen that. So we have to enable this one. Click on Save. And I see that this, um, this, this entire data sheet will be stored in Excel data. And I'm going to look through it with a for each. So put that one here. And the value to iterate, that's Excel data. And it will be put in current item. Okay, so the only thing we are now doing is we are just making sure that the bot is looping through this Excel sheet and is basically going to phones, tablets, and laptops. And inside this one, we're going to need another loop. And that's uh, that's the second loop. And that, that's the loop that's going to control the pagination. And if you can't follow anything of this, don't worry, I will explain this all in the next minutes. Okay, so in this for each, let's also open the browser. You know, I like Chrome, but feel free to use any browser. Launch Chrome, and I'm just gonna launch this website. So just 
copy from uh, static after the second slash, this one. And let's put this one here. I want to launch a new instance. And I also like the, this page to be maximized because that way it's always the same size. It's always the, the maximum screen size, which is always the same. So click on save. And if we launch Chrome, we're also going to close the browser, right? Uh, close web browser. Don't be confused because there are multiple activities to open every web browser, Chrome, Firefox, etc. But there was only one activity to close them all. And I'm going to do that here. Closing the browser. Okay, and in this for each, we're then going to do the actual scraping. So let's see which activities we have for that. So navigate to browser automation, web data extraction, extract data from web page. This is the one you need. And I'm going to put that in the for each. Browser, that's still correct. Timeout is 60 seconds. Store data mode, that's a variable, that's, that's correct. And you see that the variable that's produced is called data from web page. So click save. And it will see that you get an error. And that's because we haven't defined which data to scrape. And if I'm going to open this one again, and if you now navigate to this website, you will see that the data extraction wizard will pop up. And this extraction wizard is a bit different than what we have seen earlier. So you can hover over all the items you want to scrape. And I definitely want to scrape the title. I know Make sure to watch carefully because this is different. Don't click on the left mouse button, but click on the right one. The, the one that you normally click on to see more uh, options. And then you can see here, extract element value. Now you can extract the text, but you can also, for example, extract the URL. And that's also quite important, especially if you want to scrape that web page as well. For now, I'm going to go for the text. And you will see that now only gives you one green border and that's not what I want. So we have to show Power Automate Desktop that there is a pattern here. So I'm also going to click on this one. Just make sure that you click on the same element on multiple instances. Right click, extract element value, and then take as well the text. And now you will see that Power Automate Desktop uh, notices that there is a pattern and it will basically um, show a dotted green line around all of the titles. And from now on, it will do that automatically if you add another element. So let's add um, the specs as well, right? Mouse click, extract element value, text. And now you will see that it, you will get this um, uh, green dotted rectangle automatically around all of them. I also want the price, so click here. And we want the text. And there is one more thing that I want, and that's the URL. And the URL is uh, hidden behind this um, link. So I'm going to click here, right mouse click, extract element value. And then you will see that you need href. So click here. I will now see that we have um, we have captured those four values from every item. So I'm going to click on finish. And because all the pages are the same, we only have to do this once. I'm going to click on save because this page is basically the same as tablets. Um, and the structure is the same. It's just the content that differs. Um, let's see what we're going to need. So I already told you in the beginning that we're going to use multiple Excel instances. And I'm going to open another Excel, so I'll launch Excel, but I'm going to do that in the for each, like this. And I want to start with a blank document because there is no data yet. The instance doesn't have to be visible. And if I open it, I'm also going to close it at the end of the for each. Um, that, here I need to save it, right, because it wasn't there, that, there yet. And the Excel instance, you can you see now that you can um, choose between the two of them. And I want to go for in Excel instance 2 because that's the second one that has been initiated here. So click on save, and I want to save the document as, and I want to save it. So you see we have the for each here, which is looping through the Excel data of the first Excel, and I'm gonna save it as the name. So phones, tablets, or laptops, dot XLSX. So let's go for a variable here. Make sure that you, that you select save document as, Document format is default, and then select um, a variable, this one here, the X. And then I'm going to go for current item. And here I'm going to use again the square brackets name. And then after the second percentage sign, so behind this one, I'm going to type dot .xlsx. So it's going to save it as uh, phones.xlsx, laptops, 
dot xlsx etc. Click on save here. And I want to make sure to save this data in this Excel file. I don't want to overwrite any data, so I want to write on the first um, row that is still empty in Excel. There is an activity for that. First, I want to get the first free row for a specific column. So take this one. Uh, let's put it here. Now the Excel instance, you know that is uh, Excel instance two. The column, and we're just going to go for column one. Because if this column is populated, the other columns of this uh, same row are also populated. I see the variable produces for us free row on column. So I'm going to click on save. And then I want to write data to Excel. Write to Excel worksheet. Like this. Excel instance is Excel instance 2. Um, the value that it would like to write, that's what they've just taken from the web page. So data from web page. Select. And the write mode is on specific cell. The column is just going to be column one because I'm going to start um, uh, at, at the first column with writing this uh, this table. And the row is going to be the first empty row. So that's going to be first free row on column. Make sure to scroll here. They will see it and then click on select. Click on save now. Okay, so that was uh, one exercise, but now we will only take one page from every category. We're going to navigate to the correct URL. So let's go to, to browser automation and then go to web page and make sure to put that in the for each. To URL and the URL that we want to go through, that's going to be current item and then URL between square brackets. And that's actually why we have this first Excel file, right? Okay, and now before we run this robot, there is one thing that we still need to change. Navigate to Launch Excel, and make sure that you make this instance visible. And for some reason, if you don't do this, um, you cannot see this data in this Excel file. You can try it yourself. So make it visible, and then let's run a robot. Okay, you probably already saw the robot writing this data. So I'm just going to open laptops because that one had the most data. And you will see that the robot has written one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And if I navigate to the laptops page, computers, laptops, then you will see that this one, this first page also has six rows. But of course you want to scrape all the pages, right? You want to get all the data, even the data on page 20. And how to do that, I'm going to show you right now. So let's close this one. Uh, let's also remove those files so that we make sure that we are not confusing ourselves. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the pagination. So basically there are two rows that you can take. You can every time click on the next button, this one, or you can just click on the button of the page and then plus one. So if you're on page one, you're going to click on two. Uh, if you're on two, you're going to click on three, etc. And I'm going to go for the second row because I think that one is a bit more, um, you, you learn a bit more. But you can also go, of course, for the other route. So let's start with making a loop. Navigate to loops. And then I'm going to take this one loop. And make sure to put it uh, below the launch Excel. Like here. Okay, we're going to start from one. Then every time we're going to increase by one, increment by one. And we're going to end, let's say, with one million. Make sure this number is large enough. And the variable produced is loop index. And that's basically the counter that will take care of counting the page that we are currently going through. So we'll start with page one. And then um, in theory, we'll end with page one million, which you will see that we are probably going to close before. So click on save. Then make sure that you extract data from web page, get first free row, and write to the Excel sheet. Those are all activities that we have to do at every page. Of course, the close Excel. We only have to do that at the end of this entire um, range huh, of laptops and phones, etc. So take those three activities. So click on the first one, then click Control. Click on the second one and click on the third one while also still holding Control. And then drag them here in the loop. Like this. Okay, and then I want to know if this button, so if the button uh, uh, page plus one is existing. So I'm going to go back here. Let's go to Browser Automation 
And then I'm going to use if web page contains. So take, take this one and put it here below the right to Excel. And if web page contains the following elements, I'm going to create a UI element here. And then here I'm going to click on two. So make sure that you, you um, click control and then you click with your left mouse button. And then you will see here the um, selector that is going to be created or the UI element. So click on save. But I'm going to change this UI element. So I'm going to click here. This is where you can find all the UI elements, all the selectors. And I'm going to click here on Ensure 2. And here you, you will see all the items that this selector is using to navigate. So you see that the selector is using um, the text 2, which is part of um, A. And the A element in HTML is uh, stands for link. So it's looking for a link that has the text 2. And I'm going to change. So I'm going to click on this one. Click on the 2 here. And I'm going to change this one with the X to a variable. And that variable is going to be loop index. But before I close, I don't want to click on page one if I'm on page one and on page two if I'm on page two. I want to click on the next one. So I'm going to say plus one, like this. And if you have this, I will show it one more time. If you have this on the screen, then uh, it should work for you as well. So click on save. So now we're only checking whether this element exists because it's also there is also a link in it, and if I'm on page 20, there is no there is no um, button anymore, which says page 21 with a link, right? So in that case, the if web page contains will return like uh, it does it it doesn't exist, uh, and in that case we also know that. Then I'm also going to add an else activity. So just search for else. Take this one else. I just put it in the if before the end, like this. Okay, so if this page exists, then of course I'm gonna click on it. So I'm gonna search here in browser automation. And I'm gonna search here. And then I'm gonna use your click link on the web page, this one. So if it exists, I'm also gonna click on it. So the UI element is the same UI element because I've seen that it exists. So now I want to click on the same element. Right, so you don't always have to create a new UI element. You can do that, but that way you will just create redundant items. So I'm just going to select this one. I'm going to click on select, and I'm going to click on save. And if the next page does not uh, exist, then I'm just going to close this loop. So I'm going to go to loops again, and then here I'm going to go for the exit loop activity, right? And then I'm only exiting uh, this loop, not this one. Okay, let's navigate here. Let's close this web page. Make sure that you have removed all the files. And I also promised you that I was going to show you how to save um, files in another directory. So for that, I'm going to open launch the first launch Excel. This one, I'm going to copy this one. Then I'm going to go to the save of the second close Excel. So this one, make sure that you have the close Excel from Excel instance 2. Click on it. And then for document paths, I'm going to just um, press Ctrl V here to paste. And I'm going to remove this last part. So now you should have uh, C users, then of course your own name, desktop, current item name, .xlsx. And that way your Excel files will be saved on the desktop, which is next to this file. Okay, um, I think we're ready. Um, so let's see if this bot is going to work. And I hope your bot worked just as well as mine. If this video was useful for you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will try to help you as good as possible. And I will see you in my next video.